Hey everyone and welcome to Homo Ludens, the channel on history and board games. And tonight I have a guest. Hey Patrick. Hello, how are you doing, Fred? I'm doing fine. Thanks for joining me for this Workers' Day special uh, for May Day. So we to are the barricades. Working... For exactly the to the work. Yes, we're fighting for the workers, definitely. Uh, no, I think it's. Uh, thank you for for uh, thank you for for coming here um, tonight. Uh, I can see that Kirk is here. Hi, Kirk. And tonight we are playing Combat Commander again. It's been a while since I have uh, played Combat Commander on this channel. I think last time was uh, with uh, Joe. Uh, really happy to going back to it. You'll have to remind me of a few things here and there. Uh, I might be a bit rusty, sure. uh, but I uh, but I trust you should be able to because uh, your channel is also pretty known for its um, combat commander content. Uh, a lot of playthroughs, a lot of uh, um, strategy tips and stuff like this. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about your channel, Patrick. Sure. Um, well, as you can see, I've got the name here. It's Patrick's Tactics and Tutorials. It's mouthful, but... We, uh, we hope to give you some good entertainment. The primary content on there, really, it kind of got started uh, about two years ago with the beginning of the, the pandemic season. And we I started releasing more content for the great campaigns of the American Civil War. That's uh, one of the series that I really love. And we started doing some playthroughs with that. And Combat Commander just kind of has always been there. It's always been my first love. And uh, I've been running the Combat Commander ladder for five years now. And that was an uh, an easy opportunity to create new content for the channel. So between that and uh, also doing some Commands and Colors, we're doing a, a, a playthrough of all the ancients from Commands and Colors with my buddy Peter. It is Peter's birthday today. Happy birthday, Peter. Happy May Day Happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. And I can see that Sev is here. Hey, Sev. And uh, yeah, and I wanted to 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 uh, to ask you. So yeah, you're doing some uh, some comments and colors too. Maybe I should invite you for. Um, have you started playing comment, uh, comments and colors samurai battles yet? Uh, the the medieval or the Napoleon? Napoleon? No, the sam samurai battles. Oh, samurai! Uh, no, no, I yeah. I have I have my copy uh, from P500, but I we have not, that's on the plan list. So uh, okay. we're going to do medieval next when we finish ancients, which is really you know ancients part two for now until they get into the crusades and everything. Uh, so our plan is to do continue once we finish all of ancients and get through the Spartans. We're going to go right into medieval, and then right after that we'll probably go into the samurai battles, which hopefully okay. by then they'll have another expansion for it. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But I, I haven't, I still haven't played it. I just put all the stickers on. I uh, still right. haven't played one single scenario. But I would say that the medieval one, I really, really like. So yeah. looking forward to, uh, looking forward to, uh, to this content coming up. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the combat commander ladder? Because you mentioned it, you invited me on that Discord server. I got a bit lost, but I thought it was interesting. So I would like to know a bit more. Sure. Uh, five years ago, we had been doing a series of just one-off little tournaments. And a couple of them I volunteered to to run it to to uh, officiate the the uh, tournament. And then after a while, people were like, "Well, this would be good to do this as an ongoing sort of thing because the Twilight Struggle ladder was going in full swing at that time." And people said, "Well, it'd be nice to have a place where we can kind of congregate and play a scenario all the time." And I said, "Well, nobody else is going to do it. I'll step up and volunteer." And uh, here we are, five years later. We're we're literally on round 60 right now, and it's open to everybody at all skill levels. We do have some Cracker Jack players, which uh, hopefully they're out there watching right now. We invited them to come see this in live because uh, I'm the I'm the whipping boy, the ladder. I'm a, I'm pretty average, and I okay. lose a lot, but uh, it's entertaining as the folks know when they watch uh, the channel. I think it's the more important is if it's entertaining and you're having fun, that's that's completely Certainly. okay. And, uh, and the, the fact that we've built a really uh, good community around it. We have uh, about 100 players now. And everyone, this is your open invitation as we do. If you've seen the videos, you know we're, we're always inviting people to play. We're about to start round 60. And uh, if anyone wants to jump in, I'll get you on the ladder and we'll start. The new cycle begins June 1st. We're going to start over with the base scenarios from from Europe, and we do one of the each of the battle packs and and the major expansions for each month all the way around. So it's perfect because there's exactly twelve things between the battle packs and C3I and uh, stuff like that. So we we have enough content to keep people going for a whole year to come around. So you said next cycle is June first. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But I think I would try to to join this. I would be curious to uh, to try to explore a bit more the that the is ladder. the that is the secret goal to get you and Joe <laughs> on the ladder here. You figured yeah. out my plan. 
I think that I think we could, Joe could be convinced. Joe could be convinced. He was uh, he was ashamed to admit that he really loved Combat Commander. Uh, and and he, I was telling you before the stream that he was a bit jealous that I, you got invited to play and and he wasn't. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I'm I'm sorry to take him. I'm sorry to take you away from Joe for this one. But uh, <laughs> I, in in honor of today and because of the scenarios that we're playing, uh, I, I pulled out my my LPs of the uh, the Soviet Army Chorus Band and the Red Army Ensemble here. So uh, we got some music for the barricades for you. Excellent for the choice. Yeah, yes. because just to, to explain, so this is what we're uh, going to play tonight. So a scenario from Battle Pack number two from Combat Commander Europe. Uh, so the one that is focusing on the Battle of Stalingrad. And do you want to tell us a bit about the scenario that you picked? Sure. This one was a... I, I had... I haven't played this one in a long, long time, but when you first mentioned that you were interested in doing this, this this jumped right out at me for a lot of reasons, and you and I got a chuckle out of it because it's called uh, Dom Dom Thirty One, which when I saw it, I immediately thought, "Oh, the the Dom Perignon Thirty One, bring me the Dom Thirty One, please." Uh, but this is a, a a very straightforward Stalingrad scenario because there's no rubble. It's not the it's not the Barricati factory where you've just got you know the the tractor parts everywhere and all the rubble and everything that can really slog down. But this one is a, uh, a fairly, I think maneuver rich one. It is uh, Germans obviously attacking the, the Soviets who are defending the, the building, which was the street address was Dom 31. And this is a scenario that was created uh, in cooperation by both Chad and Kai Jensen. So that's uh, that's great to see a scenario that has both of their names on it. Yeah, that's really nice. And 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 actually, if you want, uh, that's a good moment for me to to plug the fact that uh, Kai was on the uh, on the show a couple of months ago uh, with the guys from uh, the Player Aid to do a top five underrated war games. So uh, if you are interested in this uh, and seeing uh, Kai's pick, that were really really cool. So I recommend to check this out after the stream, obviously. Uh, but cool. I guess what I will do is probably uh, bring um, this. We have already done the setup, obviously, uh, on the stream. Uh, so for people who are wondering, we're playing tonight using Vassal. Uh, so Vassal is a, is a free software on which you can play a lot of war games. Uh, it's not the most beautiful one, but uh, it is extremely efficient and very nice to play on. Um, I'm a big fan of Vassal. Uh, so this is where we are playing. And we might... I'm not sure because Patrick is here, so I think we're pretty safe. But we might do a uh, rules mistake. Things during a stream might happen where you're focused on other stuff. So it can happen. Don't be upset. And if it does, either let me know in the comments or activate the Klingon subtitle because I might have already catched it and add it in the subtitles after the stream. Um, and I think that's the only warning I had to uh, to give. Uh, anything that you're thinking, Patrick, that I could use? Um I think probably a good idea for folks that are not familiar with the Stalingrad special rules. This does this particular scenario in addition to the, the basic Europe rules does use a variety of the Stalingrad specific things that change it a little bit. Uh, for example, normally we would be using rubble rules, but as I said, there's no rubble in this particular scenario right now. So if we get to a point later on that we do have some rubble show up, um, and that's specifically created by the way you attack certain hexes. So we'll worry about that then. Um, we do have over here in the upper right-hand corner above the die roller is the Urban Sniper. So that is an, a wonderful twist on this where we have all that sniper activity normally in Combat Commander. But in this one, if your sniper doesn't hit anything, you, you bank it, basically. You accumulate mm. points and you swing that over to either the German side or the Soviet side. And that can be the, those those bonus points can be applied to a fire attack normally, which is really cool. Um, so that adds a lot of intrigue to this game. There are no roads on this map, even though there's printed roads. We see all of them named, but uh, because of craters and debris in in Stalingrad at the time, these printed roads don't exist. So for any of the modifiers for terrain, normally that'd be a minus one. That is not a factor here. Plus, they don't give us enhancements to our movement. No bonus mm. movement for that. Um, Fred has a variety of sewers. Only the Soviets can use the sewers here. Those are pre-printed per this scenario, so he's got them there. When he decides he wants to sneak down into the sewers, he will use an advance order. It's always advance. It's never move. And the unit that's standing in the sewer can then has a potential of getting lost. You will draw a card. If it's doubles, then I, as the Axis player, get to select 
which sewer you actually end up in. Uh, and then you have the option of either letting people pop out of that sewer or you can put them on the time track to simulate okay. that they are, they are lost. Okay, and good. No, no weapons with an encumbrance. I don't think you have anything. Uh, uh, yes, that medium machine gun. For obvious reasons, you can't stuff that down into the sewer. It's just too big. Yeah, I'm going to uh, bring it up, actually, uh, of the stack. Yeah. Good. And, uh, uh, and yeah, that, 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 that reminds ahead. me that I should probably have read the rules before because I thought you could take the sewers and I place wires depending on them. So that was a bit <laughs> dumb. But that's fine. Yeah. Okay. They're very secure sewers. Yeah. Um, also, the melee is different than normal combat commander. In this, in Stalingrad specifically, this is something that actually carried over into the Pacific Theater as well. The, the order of melee is not instantaneous. It's, it always occurs at the beginning of the German player. So the Soviets can get into melee, and then nothing happens until the beginning of the German players. Likewise, if the Germans advance into melee, the Soviets have an entire turn that they can escape that melee if they choose not to to go into uh, so you can uh, disengage yes okay. you can exactly and um overstacking rules are also a little different here there are there's no um automatic elimination or breakdown of a unit that is overstacked and that's being more than seven figures on um on a particular hex in this case again like they do later in pacific it's just a minus one to your cover for every unit over seven so if i have eight in there it's a minus one to the cover etc cetera, et cetera. okay and for people who are not really uh, don't have a lot of experience with command, combat commander, uh, when Patrick says figure is, for example, you see that stack here. I have three counters, and you count the actual number of figures on them. So I have two for the garrison, four for the rifle, for the rifle team, and one for the sergeant, and that's exactly seven. So that means that this stack is at its stacking limit. Mm -hmm. That's exactly uh, right. And that's all there is to it. That's the only specifics, other than we do have some uh, a couple of special rules which were affecting the setup. Uh, your Svizdrov's garrison is already in the building there at Dom 31. Uh, yeah. You have your scattered garrison, which is down east of this you know, this road, the Pribilitskaya road, and I am west of that road. And you have replacements that will show up on time advance number seven. Time trigger yeah, number seven. You. I can see it. that. Great. And I see that there is a few people that uh, come into the chat. I can see that Brendan is here. Thanks, Brendan, for being here. Joe is here. Happy to see your face for the first time. Apparently, he's probably someone who was watching your channel quite a bit. And Kabuki Kid is here. Cool. Nice to all have you tonight. Uh, great. Brendan, uh, I will do my best to get him into the great campaigns because it's, you know, it's uh, like Napoleonics, but more so. Yeah. Can it be more so than Napoleonics? I sure, we learned I, I, I think a lot. If I, if I want to be into Napoleonics, I would probably play Napoleonics games. I, but we'll see <laughs> if you can convince me. I'm open. I'm open. Oh, okay. uh, great. Uh, so who is starting? I, guess you, uh, I have the first move. I have drawn my cards. You have drawn your cards. Uh, yep. Let's see what I've got here. I think we will do... What do you say we do a move order? So I'm going to... Uh, I'll play a move order here, and I will activate all of these units with Sergeant Beerman up here, hmm. and they will it, they will move. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is throw out some smoke grenades. I think, Look. Patrick, that's uh, your first mistake. And it's what is my first, first mistake? Uh, yeah, just to do to activate that specific group right now. I think big mistake. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that uh, is? Are you doing trash talking? Is this? Is that what you're doing? No, no. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just warning you. Oh, okay. 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 Good. Good. I love when I make mistakes. So uh, let's let's throw out some smoke right about uh, here. Well, that's wow. a nice ten smoke. Uh, oh god, that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. So they no. will, uh, they will move there. Would you like to do anything about that? Uh, yeah, and the hindrance uh, impacts me well when you're it, in it, right? Yeah, it also. does. It does. I'm definitely not doing anything right now. Okay. Uh, they will. Uh, I think we'll throw out some more smoke grenades. And let's see. Let's see how good this one is. We have the really good smoke grenades. Uh, there's seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then uh, they'll go to there. You're using all the good smoke grenades right I now. I know. 
And I'm thinking that if I don't do something right now, you're going to get into that building and then it's going to be really hard to fire at you. Hmm. Oh, and actually I already have one unit that is not in sight of this one anymore. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, and then everyone would be able to follow through. And how much does it cost you to move through a building? Uh, two. So I can get into that building, but I'll have to stop. Yeah, it looks bad. But maybe that was my trap all along. So I would, keep, I would let you keep on doing that. Okay, then we will go. So just for, for people watching the stream once again that are not really comfortable with Combat Commander, while uh, the opponent is taking its turn uh, and, and when they are moving, uh, if uh, I had a fire uh, card, I could decide to play it as a reaction. Uh, so I would be able to fire at Patrick's unit each time they take a step uh, while they're in line of sight. All right. Well, then they will use a three and four to get into that building. Uh, then Beerman and his stack will go one to there, or one, two to there. And they've got six, uh, five total. Hmm. Uh, three to there. four and five to there and the heavy machine gun will just go let's see there they've got an encumbrance of one so they can go three they'll go one and two three to there and we'll do a next order um i will do an advance order and we'll advance all of these blokes down here. We'll go there. And, and I'll do these one at a time in case you, since you're a defender, you may have some defense related uh, trickery up your sleeve. Yeah, I'm looking at this right now. I just need to check because there is one. Um... Thing that makes me think. Uh... And hello, the chat. Yes. Uh, oh, I can see that. Oh, and Eric is here. So Eric, uh, I think I've seen you comment recently on the so on on some of the recent videos. Nice to see you here. Uh... And oh, and you backed Jest of Robin Hood. Excellent idea. That's a uh, everyone should be doing that. Everyone, <laughs> everyone should, should do that. Yeah. This is a commercial for the Jest of Robin Hood. <laughs> yeah, obviously, as we're big, standing <laughs> around and and and, and Nottingham is actually very similar in a lot of ways. Um, wait a minute, I'm looking at my stuff. No, it's okay. You sorry, you can. Oh, you can no problem. On. Okay. Um, let's see. This unit will go here. Uh, that unit will go there, and that unit will go there. And that is all. And that is Next, enough. That is enough. <laughs> I will uh, I will draw back up, and I'm going to clean the board and kick it back to you. Yep. And something funny just happened on my side. My mouse decided to stop working, so that's going to be uh, so. I... <laughs> So I'm that, at, that would make a... it more challenging, right? Yes, it makes it really challenging. Now I'm trying to handle the stream and play, and oh, it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be fine. Um, okay, so I'm not really happy with what you've just done. So the two smoke here in the north, really smart, uh, gives you a nice path, well hindered uh, to actually go there. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, and you have a good opening to either go and engage from building to building or potentially take uh, uh, take objective number three. So what I'm going to do is play a move order. OK. And it's here. Good. Uh, what I will do is I will uh, activate uh, that lonely unit here that is on objective two in the bottom right of the board and that would be one two three and 
Mm -mm. And once I'm in the building, is it one or is it also two? It's still two, yeah. Yeah, so two. Uh, yeah, and then, and just to also to check the, um, the so th this is like, um, uh, the, this part, like, does it block line of sight? So those, um, those, uh, the, bu the bushes? Yeah, the bushes. Yeah, yeah, they're like, uh, they're like full grown urban trees. Okay, then I will I will I will go into the middle of the of the P house with my fourth uh, movement. So that's my first order, and then, well, it's gonna be a bit sad, but I think that's gonna be it for me. So I'm gonna clean that up, uh, and then I just draw a card, and I'm done. It's back to you. Okay. Uh, let's see. And I'm gonna try to <laughs> to, to recover my mouse in a way or another. <laughs> I don't know uh, what happened. Let's do. Let's Hi, Hector. Another... Thanks for, for joining us. There's Hector. I know Hector. Uh, OK, let's do another move order. And Airman says Schnell. Uh, let's see what we can do here. I have to get because of those those trees and things. I believe that is considered like urban woods, so it is a move of two. All right, and then we'll go. Uh, Beerman will go two to there. Any reaction? Uh, the thing is, I'm not sure you're in line of sight for me. Let's see. Uh, for for the SMG uh, are because you got a straight. Yes. But I think they're uh, only a uh, one, two, yeah. three range. Yeah, so that's uh, not great. No, I will not. I will not do anything. Okay, um, that's three, four to there, and we will uh, we'll move into the gazebo. Yeah, Ga gazebo. Giving you objective uh, three. Objective three, and uh, that is worth two victory points. So that is a four point swing. So I'll move and add four points to that. And then the rifles will go two and four to there. Okay. That is all for that move order. Hmm. And I'm just going to draw up and send it to you. Good. Um... In that scenario, what's my discard capability? Ah, the Soviets have a three-card discard. Three-card discard. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do my turn. It's gonna be a bit of a sad turn, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sad. do a, a turn to discard. A sad, uh, but sometimes necessary. So I'm gonna discard uh, two cards and draw back, and it's gonna be back to you. And it's even worse. <laughs> 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 that is what we love to hear. Uh, I am going to... I'm going to discard two and draw two. Send it to you. And yes, I'm sorry, Hector. Uh, Red Flag over Paris is out of stock. Uh, so a few retailers still have some copies, uh, but those are the very last copies. Um, so yeah, I would say if you if you like the game, and I'm happy that you did, uh, I would really recommend that you get one other retailer because those are going to be the the last copies uh, of that print run at least. Uh, we can hope that uh, GMT will do another print run. Uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, I will not prevent you from uh, requesting from GMT that they do a second printing. Uh, but uh, nothing I is. Uh, nothing I is suspect planned. you've got a whole closet with about twenty copies in there. I, I no, I. I Actually, yeah. So I I got uh, some some uh, some reviewer copies, uh, obviously, but uh, but I didn't. Uh, I already gave quite a few, uh, so I, I don't think I have that many. I have mine, and then I think I, may, I might have a couple that are that are left. Um, so uh, so yeah, those are those are the very uh, last ones. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do another really poor turn. It says that I really don't have the hand that I want. Uh, I'm going to do some discard action again. 
uh, and I'm going to draw again. And this is slightly, not excellent, but slightly better. Slightly oh, less terrible. Slightly less terrible. Exactly. That's the that's the fitting. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm I'm not really happy with my hand either, so I'm going to discard three. And I will draw three. There is an interesting Sorry. question question from from Joe asking if uh, uh, like do you feel like there is a difference when you're playing the physical copy of uh, Combat Commander and uh, uh, and playing on Vassal? How do you feel the experience is different? That is a great question. We actually were discussing that on your Discord server very la just last night. So people, if you want to get in on that discussion you should kick in a couple of bucks to to Fred's channel and you will get to the Discord channel as well. But um, yeah, I love taking Combat Commander and teaching it at conventions. Uh, it is a labor of love, but it is tedious to sit there and go through all of your, you know, your counters and everything and pull out the counter trays and the maps and stuff like that. With Vassal, it's exceptionally easy. I mean, he and I swapped our files and, and we are good to go in two minutes, right? So Vassal is vastly more convenient for that and that allows us to play more often so i'm going to try to do uh something and thanks for plugging the coffee uh of the most of the videos i forgot to edit in the description but if you go on the channel page you would find uh, the coffee link to actually uh, support uh uh the show here and i just got a notification from Streamyard telling me that uh, my memory was full so i had to uh, to oh, buy no. more more space <laughs> so you know how you can do help me with that you can you can support me on coffee so there you go thanks that to is... everyone who's backing and if you do you will have access to the discord server also where we have as you can hear a lot of interesting discussions um cool so i th so what i'm what i'm thinking so i'm looking at those guys here uh and i'm thinking they are kind of uh have a nice line of sight to this mortar here that i don't they like do. My only problem is that uh, my range is not great. Um, I'm a bit worried about that. So most of my range is three. I'm wondering if uh, the LMG garrison uh, fires, uh, do they get support fire from those ones? No, they won't. They will fire they, alone. They can because Vidrov's command gives a uh, plus one. Oh, for yeah, a plus one for everything. Oh, but that's perfect then. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a fire order. Yep. First attack. And I'm going to attack from here to here. So I'm going to activate. Uh, no. Main function, activate. Oh, I wanted to activate the whole stack. I'm going to have to do it manually. Lame. That's not cool. Uh, and I could have also activated this unit next to me to support. But the thing is that uh, they don't have a line of sight because they are behind me in the building. So that means that it's only that stack that's going to activate for fire. Uh, OK. And now, if I remember this correctly, so the unit that's going to fire is going to be the one at the bottom, so the LMG garrison. So that's they are firing at four, mm -hmm. plus one for uh, the leader, so five. And you and have then... the option here to fire them separately, if you wish, because that, as the defender, is a very good tactic for chewing up cards. So oh. you can make two individual shots. I could make two individual shots. So that's interesting. I could have one firing at six, so the rifle, and then the LMG garrison firing at five. Uh, well, it'd be it'd be four and five. Yeah, the the light machine they, is a four. Yeah. Oh, uh, but they don't benefit from the plus one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, either. you're right. Yes, yeah, they both okay. eight, five and six. Right. So, so five and six. And you know what? That's actually an awesome suggestion. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna deactivate this. Um, Oh, but the problem is to, yeah, and they will benefit from, but only one would benefit from the support fire from the leader, right? Uh, no, they all get it. They all get it. Okay. Yep. Uh, wait a minute. So I cannot deactivate. Okay, it doesn't matter. I will do one, then the other. So okay. let's break this down. So I will start with the, the LMG garrison. Uh, so they have a firepower of four. Uh, then they have plus one for uh, Sergeant Zvidrov. So that's five. Uh, and then anything else that I want to add, or that's it? You can certainly add if you want. If uh, if they qualify, any, any action cards can can be added. Suffice that you've got the criteria met. Uh, no, 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 and I have nothing to make it better. So that would be just a five on this one. Okay. Good. 
so this is my base firepower, and I fire here. So we'll draw a card for uh, to see what I add to this, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll click on die roll here. Yep. And oof, that's not great. So I have, yeah. But low so odds attacks are your friend in this one. So I am a, a seven morale plus uh, two for the building cover. It's two, right? Three? Gosh, you'd think I'd know this by now. Uh, yeah. I always get confused with the buildings. It is a three. So I'm a 10. So a 10 before my roll. Uh, and I'm at the 11, so you cannot fail. That's right. There you yeah. go. So I'm just pulling a card. Good. So uh, it, it's good because this card is uh, is four plus six. So that's a good roll. I'm happy that this roll is out. So that's mm -hmm. uh, that's nice. And I'm going to do the next order, and I'm going to do a oh, fire you, again. Well, no, oh. you actually get the, that second fire. You get the second shot. Oh. you activated both of them with the single fire order. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's a good, uh, good So this point. one will be yeah. with a six. So this one would be uh, so five plus one, six. And I'm going to draw again. So Allied Die Roll. Uh, wait a minute. Did I do? Yeah, I'm not sure. So that's 6 plus 7. That's going to be 13. OK. So I'm just a 10 again, pulling a card. There you go. OK. And now I can actually do next order. I didn't miss anything, right? Nope. Everything looks nope. good. Good. Uh, that wasn't as good as I expected, though. <laughs> so that's <laughs> uh, that's not great. Um, and then, yeah, those block line of sights. That's pretty annoying, because I was really happy with the placement of my medium machine gun here, thinking that I had a good uh, good options here. And my line of sight is, yeah, you would be in line of sight, but I cannot fire at you. So I guess, unfortunately, that would be my on the action of the turn. So I'm going to, uh, I don't remember, how do I end my turn in this one? Oh, Patrick, can you hear me? Whoops, I'm not sure if I've, if I'm lost or if I lost Patrick. So if you see in the stream, I don't know if you see that Patrick is static. Ah, I think, yeah, he's out. I guess I will answer questions from the chat while I wait for Patrick to come back. So Eric, you are asking, uh, can we get the learn to play video here uh, with the designer of Just for Robin Hood? We could do that. Uh, it's just that uh, when we do, I would prefer to have uh, final art to do this. Uh, I think it's a bit. Uh, it's it's. I would prefer it. I've 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 done a bit of a. I've done a lot of content, or not a lot of content, but a bit of content of, of Red Flag of Paris while he was still in playtest art. Um, and it helped during P500, but now I'm I'm a bit uh, less comfortable with this content being online with the because it's not really depicting how the game actually is. Um, so I would prefer for Just of Robin Hood to, to only show it on, on the YouTube channel once I have, or at least something that is closer to, to final art. But when I do, uh, yes, I would happily do so. Uh, so that's the, so that's, I hope that answers your question, Eric. Uh, Hector, um, so you were saying that you like how the X's are really large in the, in the real copy. Yeah, that's true. You can actually, you don't have to stack them. I think it's one of the features that I like about the, 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 the graphics design, the, the way that it's extremely functional, uh, in the depiction of buildings and terrain, but also the fact that, uh, that you can actually have the. The, the the chits laid out is is really really cool in combat commander i agree i think it's a i think it's a very nice feature of the of the physical copy um so yeah i uh i agree with you on this uh what is the volume of the caspian sea so uh so you mean in the, the the combat commander volume? Uh, like, is it the battle pack? I'm not sure. I, I don't think I, I I don't think I have it. But when Patrick comes back, he might have an uh, an answer for you. Um, yes. And if you're looking forward to just of Robin Hood videos, uh, that's good. I think there might be a few on the channel uh, that are uh, things that that we're recording during maybe the 
a, the tournament that we did a, a year or so ago, something like this. But it, the game changed uh, quite significantly um, uh, since then. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually sharing some some content soon. Um, yeah. And uh, poo, poo, poo. and yeah, but I, I think we really lost uh, Patrick. I'm trying to, oh yeah. Okay, I got the message from him uh, uh, on Discord. He actually had a, a power outage, so he's coming back. So in the meantime, if you have any question, we have a bit of time. Maybe I can try to find a way to fix my mouse, but I don't think like it's gonna work. Those are, yeah, streaming technical problems. This happened. This is what stream is about. I don't know what I can talk about. Oh, uh, I guess what I can talk about is uh, today I uh, had a friend coming over and we tried a, a variant for Red Flag over Paris, uh, something that you might have heard me and Mark Herman discuss when we had our uh, designer duel video. Um, and I've been playing around that variant for quite a while. And I'm pretty happy with it right now. Uh, it's a way to offset a bit um, some of the some of the um, the randomness of the card draws that can be frustrating when you draw only four cards. It can be uh, it can have quite an impact, but it it adds a lot of a big layer of decision making for the initiative and everything. So it's more for I would say more advanced players, uh, but that was uh, quite fun. Uh, and what else? I don't know what I'm. I'm looking at what's on my desk. What I'm waiting for, Patrick. Oh, and I've played my first game of. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, Saladin from uh, Shako's game. I don't know if anyone knows this game, but it was my first game uh, of it uh, this afternoon. Um, looks a bit like uh, W eighteen fifteen, so um, uh, like a fixed maneuver uh, kind of thing where you have you have a few cards for different each. Yeah, each each. Um, each part of your army has a different card and can do different things, and you have those sticks and you move them on the on the board. That's uh, that's uh, that's a pretty nice. I was pretty excited about it. Uh, it's very different from table battles, very different from W eighteen fifteen, but keeps some of the same philosophy. Uh, I just really like what they did with the um, with uh, with the system, the direction that they were taking, and the artwork is is just just amazing. Um, and uh, yeah. So, and we have, thank you, Sav, for asking question while we're waiting for Patrick, <laughs> because I'm starting to feel lonely. Uh, what other combat commander scenarios have you played? Pacific, any thoughts on the series and its evolution generally? So I've played uh, quite a bit of uh, combat commander Europe a while ago. Um, I, I have a few battle packs. I have the one in France 1940, uh, but I haven't played it yet. And I mostly played combat commander Europe. The other part of the series that I played, and I'm gonna bring it up. It's not from GMT, it's actually from Exasim, and it's a variant of it. Uh, that's a Great War Commander, but it's more or less the same system set in World War One. This I played a lot. Uh, and I would say that apart from the artillery being a bit weird um, in some aspect, and I can understand the complaint, uh, it's it's also a great iteration of the of the system. And you're back, Patrick. Oh, God. Let oh, me sure. tell you about my local oh. power company. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, please there's do. A, there, there's a rumble of thunder, ten miles away, and it it just it didn't even trip. It just brown. It went a, did a brown out, and it was enough to trip the wireless. And uh, I'm back. Hello. But you're back. You're back. Let, let okay. me get, let me get back into the vassal session here. Yeah, I was I was I was uh, I was I was fitting in the. Uh... We're tap dancing. Yeah, step dancing as much as I could. I was like, and and for a while I wasn't sure that you were dropping or I was dropping. So so there was a bit of confusion at, at some points. But uh, had a few questions. Uh, sure. Sold sold some of my games, making some promo again and again. Good, uh, good man. <laughs> Don't let yes. a good opportunity go to waste. Exactly. Uh, let's see. I'm going to uh, quit this game, and I will try to get. Actually, uh, yes. And and just to conclude, Sav, uh, the the one that I really want to try is Pacific, uh, but I've never played it. But it's uh, Volko is so, uh, yeah, like he's I can the... help you out with that too. And it's funny <laughs> you you invoked the Volko magic. Uh, I know that he is a an integral part of your channel now, but uh, I thought it would be funny if we did one of his scenarios that he created as well. Oh, we so. could do that. Yeah, I think he would be extremely happy. He, he suggested, so he gave me a list of games that he would like to come on the channel to do a teach and play for. Uh, and I think that Combat Commander Pacific was uh, was uh, 
uh, was one of them. Uh, there was also Wellington. There was a few things, but yeah, of course, um, Combat Commander Pacific was really high on his list. He really loves it. Okay, so it's trying to load me here, getting back into the room. It still sees the ghost of me in there. I'm gonna... Yeah, we're going to have two of you. That's, yeah. Yeah, let me uh, let me go back out of the room and come back in, see if that will help. It's all part of the show, folks. All part of the show. Yeah, and I wanted to say, um, I'm I'm wondering how where do I click to end my round? I think it's the top right, right? The uh, the focus. eraser. Yeah, you, you yeah. do next order, and then you do the the little magic eraser. <clears throat> okay. And, it's and I would not... draw a card, and it would be back to you. And okay. oh, Russ is here. Hey, Russ. It is not letting me synchronize with you, so. Hmm. <laughs> this is Please really... pardon our technical difficulties. <laughs> this is, you know, I, I lost my mouse. Uh, like, wow, we are cursed, minutes, man. You know what? Ten minutes in. We should just we should just save it here and just kibitz for the next twenty minutes. We can do that. We can sure. definitely do that. We, uh, let's let's save the, it. The combat commander <laughs> call-in show. Oh, and 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 Joe is here. So Joe, you're you're joining perfectly on time. So hi, Joe. Thanks for for joining. So we we've had a series of of unfortunate events. Uh, I lost my mouse <laughs> like five or ten minutes in, like after the first turn, something like this. And and Russ uh, just had a power outage, and now we cannot synchronize with me. So that's by far my best stream ever. Uh, uh, so I everything is <sighs> is going is going really well. So we yeah. might actually save it here and pick it up uh, on a, on another day and. What we can do is is rent about uh, games or or something like this, and sure. we have some question. You know what? Let's let's pick up some question. I'm gonna remove this, and we have Kobe here. Uh, question for uh, Patrick and me: um, Have you played the last hundred yards? And if so, how do you feel it compares to Combat Commander? And I will let that uh, Patrick answer that question because I've got quite a few people asking me about uh, last hundred yards. There is just one thing that I want to say is that I haven't played it. I'm not really big on on tactical games uh, overall. I love Combat Commander okay. because it's it's you epic. Uh, it's uh, I, I I just love the experience of playing Combat Commander and everything. But for me to play a tactical game, it really needs to have something that uh, gets me into it. I, right. I've tried a few. I find them interesting and everything, but I'm not a big fan. So I naturally didn't when i sold last hundred yards I, I wasn't like ooh, i really have to try it but a lot of people asked and i think one day i would like to try it just to see if i like it but yeah i i haven't tried it yet i am the same way i i think the word that you're looking for that i totally associate with combat commander is cinematic or another word would be narrative and i need a narrative in my story i need a rich tapestry that's that's created by it um people say well you know asl really did it and they've got random event charts and i'm like yeah but the you know you don't have a hero that could run across there and throw a satchel charge in and pull out his flamethrower and yeah. destroy a bunker i need that and just uh, you know other tactical games kind of leave me a little cold now like you i will admit i have not i had a copy and i i just traded it away of the last cool. hundred yards because when i read the rule book i was like wow this is much more fiddly than i wanted um and and i don't know what it is about it it's just this combat commander and chad's work has just hit such a sweet spot for me and that's why it has staying power i think and you know it's a testament to us having five years of a ladder and a hundred diehard players so and i really agree on, on this aspect of the narrative for me it's super important and i really feel it when i play combat commander which is weird because when you look at the game it's actually it, it like it's pretty dry it's very functional especially compared to other uh tactical games but i feel the narrative is so strong there i'm really feeling like i'm i'm, I'm going through something pretty epic uh i yeah. i think it's a really good point uh we have another question but this time it's up front and up front i i think i did one scenario uh once and it had really this narrative but my problem was i'm, I'm not confusing it with another game upfront is the is the solo one you know it's, uh no that's ambush ah that's ambush okay so then i haven't played upfront i played ambush and i really liked ambush but that's not the question so then i would shut up now and let you but again it, it had a, a book you know like uh, even to, to hear rodney say that that was one of the first war games he ever played when he was talking about it and how that was his incentive his world opening of of war games was from ambush 
Um, yeah, I mean, I totally get that because that paragraph book had so much potential for a story. Uh, but I, I can't even get a copy. I've tried for years to get a copy of un Upfront, and I think they're becoming a little more available now on the secondary market. But uh, again, I've learned that a lot of what Chad took and put into Combat Commander was created in the you know, the squad leader card game of, of Upfront. And uh, I was like, well, that's just squad leader with cards. I, I still want to stay, you know, with all the tweaks. You know. And um, yeah. Oh, but actually the someone asked the question about Ambush. And uh, so it was Russ and, and, and Kabuki Kid actually. And personally, Ambush, I, I, I thought it was really, really interesting. But then again, I don't play a, really a lot of solo games, so right. so that's uh, that's also one of the issues. But you you've played Ambush, right? I have. I I think I got my first Ambush copy in eighty seven or eighty eight, and it was neat because that was I was of an age where I was just coming out of sort of the the choose your own adventure books, you know, and and now it's like, well, I, I'm gonna I'm a grown up now. I'm playing war games, and it's got paragraphs in there, and that, it reminded me a lot. I also had the Star Trek adventure game, which had, you know. The, the paragraph system that you would go through and go, oh, my, my red shirt just got killed on an away team. So it was it was really neat. Yeah, it's really cool. And I, I think this idea of uh, choose your own adventure applied to um, to war games, uh, I'm a bit sad that it, yeah, I, I would like it to be a bit more developed. I think there is a lot of interesting things in that uh in that area, like more more narrative based, I think that Purple Haze is trying to do this with uh, I'm from really Phalanx. Forward to that, yeah, yeah. I'm really curious about how they are doing the system, but I think having some games that go more in that direction and and do it seriously and everything, I think that that yeah, that sounds really interesting. And well, we have people a... have talked for years about adapting the Combat Commander system to other conflicts, and the one the three that I hear most often, um, and in sort of in a range of of potential are is the Spanish civil war from what 36 to 39 or yep. 40. Um, that one, I think is you could probably do that right out of the box <clears> right <throat> now with, with the materials that you have for combat commander with a few adjustments. Uh, people will talk about the, the China, you know, during world war two, you could do a lot with that potentially. And then people really want to see Korea or Vietnam. Uh, I think Korea probably has a little more likelihood, but Vietnam, I think you would probably have to rebuild the system a, a bit just because yeah. there's a lot more activity that's that's variable than just squad i mean there's, there's the whole recon that is very important to that um so i think you'd probably have to rebuild it from the ground up for that but maybe and I, and i think for spanish civil war it would work especially as yes, there are some packs like the resistance one uh, that is focused on on uh, right yeah resistance action so you have more uh, unconventional uh, um, uh, units and everything. So I think there is already even some of the rules or exception that already exist within the existing the, within the current battle packs. So yeah. should be pretty easy to uh, to adapt. Have another question from Joe. Completely random. Uh, there is a connection because it's also Chad Jensen, so it's not random. But asking if we had played Urban Sprawl, which is a bit weird for you to ask Joe, because if I had played Urban Sprawl, you would know that I would have. <laughs> so, so, so it's, it's yes, I haven't played it, Joe, and and you knew that. But um, I, I, have you have you played it, Patrick? I have. I I did own it. Um, I I liked it, but then I mm -hmm. liked Welcome to Centerville more so i think for the the chad jensen city building games i think urban straw was a, a good start and then going on to welcome to centerville i think scratched the itch more for me because uh, it had a little more um stuff that you could play with in there where urban sprawl is like it's kind of like a puzzle you know you just got your your grid layout and you're you're building the different blocks of the city but welcome to centerville has you competing and i i think i'm wondering if he maybe had learned some some from the because suburbia came out about the same time and i'm mm -hmm. wondering if maybe he they you know got some of the sim elements from that and there were some really neat individual competitions in that plus i like the 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 time management system of that game with the dice it was really cool yeah and do you recognize some of the the touch of uh, chad in it or or is it really a radically different game oh no i mean clearly he, he I, well, from his uh, rule books alone, I mean, you can always mm. tell that that's a Chad Jensen rule book right there. That's uh, it was so easy to read and and just jump right in and play. And I think it it's a nice crossover for for you know as a Euro game for GMT <clears> to put out something that is quasi Euro games. It it was pretty neat. I liked it. Yeah. 
Another question from uh, Russ here. Uh, another question, but just a comment regarding Conflict of Heroes. Um, so I said that I was not a big fan of tactical uh, war games, but I think that Conflict of Heroes is really up there in terms of uh, like if if you I had to play a tactical war game, there is a few options that I would almost always uh, say uh, yes to. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, well, Combat Commander, if, if I can, but also Conflict of Heroes. I think Conflict of Heroes is an amazing system. Uh, really, really cool, extremely fun, magnificent production quality from Academy Games. Like it's, it's really a beautiful game, actually quite simpler. And what I think is really impressive with Conflict of Heroes is the way they built the rule book. Like you don't have to read all the rule book to start playing scenarios. Right. They have sections per, per, per buckets of batch of scenarios. And you can learn, play a few scenarios, then learn a bit more, add a few scenarios. The way it's built is really feels very natural and you get into the gameplay and yeah. the, the counters can feel overwhelming because they have a lot of information. But as soon as you figure out what they are, everything like the user experience, the architecture, the architecture of the information and everything is, is really nice. Oh, sure. Just, have you have you tried it? Conflict of I have. Yeah, the, actually, the same person that introduced me to Combat Commander back in 2006, he also had Conflict of Heroes. And we did play them probably within a month or two of each other. And uh, so the, the, the positive and the negative for Conflict of Heroes was um, I really liked the facing so that your counter had to <clears throat> face and it, it did recognize flanks and you could, you could get some modifications for flanking somebody. Um, what I didn't like in lieu of combat commander was it's a command point system so yeah. each of the units is like, yeah you're going to expend points and do this and that i'm like but i want the cards i love the cards from combat yeah. commander you know so the <clears> multi-function <throat> use of the cards and saying oh well now i can do an action or now i can do this um and the events that just and it, it's so funny when i go through the cards for combat commander and i see that there's really only i mean <clears> you could see the list of events on on one side of a card it's it's only six or seven different event types but fire i mean come on fire on the battlefield that's cool and it can spread because of the wind and it just all sorts of neat stuff yeah yeah it's it, it, it yeah it's you don't have that 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 bit of narrative chaos and fun from combat commander but I don't know if you've tried the latest uh, iteration of Conflict of Heroes. They did a small adjustment to how the action point works, and it brings a lot of flexibility to a bit more flexibility to the game in the way you activate units. You have a lot more uh, options for uh, opportunity fire and everything, and it's you should try it again. It's not you don't have the fun with the cards, and I love cards, so I, I understand where you're coming from. But uh, but I think it's uh, I really like the latest version of the of the system. And we have a, actually a cool question from, from Saverio here for you. Um, I see that. What is one of your favorite games to teach and why? Okay, so my two favorite games to teach, uh, one of them I literally just did. Uh, so Peter, who, who plays uh, the Commands and Colors with, uh, with me, the series we're doing, uh, he had never played Twilight Struggle, nor had he played Labyrinth. And uh, a, a local buddy of his has the physical copy of Labyrinth. And when Steam had the sale, and this, uh, I think the sale's over now, but uh, they, the play deck, the play deck systems for Steam went on sale. And he bought both of them. And I taught him Twilight Struggle uh, last week. And he promptly drove us to DEFCON 1, so he lost quickly. And then he learned not to do that. And then we played yesterday, and we went all the way to turn 9. And uh, he says he doesn't know what he's doing, but the fact that we went to turn 9 means that he, he is... Uh, He's doing okay, so we're gonna we're gonna tackle Labyrinth here pretty soon because that's one of my favorite games. And speaking of Volko, uh, it there's a guy that I play with at BGG Con, and we play every year, and we pull out all of the expansions, and we just have a great time doing that. But my absolute favorite one to teach now because I've got it so in the bucket to teach, and I've offered it to you is Pax Porfiriana because I think that is uh, again a card game, but it is so incredibly rich. And it plays five players like a dream. And uh, whenever I teach that at a convention, people just, they're, they're just overwhelmed at mm. first in the first 20 minutes. And then two hours later, they're just walking away like, I just had an incredible experience. And that's, that's what I look for every time. Well, that's it. Now that you say this, I'm thinking it could be nice to have you come on the show and do a teach and play of Pax Porfiriana. That could be really, really... <laughs> but we, we have really? to... So, so the thing is, 
I'm, let's let's talk. Let's let's be real now. So sure. on, on the Homo Ludens Discord server, we have the the club de jeu, so the the the, the monthly uh, gaming club, and all the members get to vote for which game we are going to play this month. So last month was Washington War. This month we're playing Wars of God, and. The thing is that I think that Patrick wanted Pax Porfiriana to win because you have a vote and Pax Porfiriana was there. And I was People a bit changed on the their votes, man. I was a bit on the fence and I feel bad because it was it was tied and I kept my vote for the last time because I'm thinking I, I'm going to wait for the last time. And then if there is a tie, I'm going to break the tie. And I, and I voted for Warriors of God because it has been on my shelf of shame. So in a, in a sense, it's a bit my fault, Patrick. And I want to make That's it fine, up to you. Fine. I know you love Joan of Arc. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Yes, and I would say that you'll get my full support for Pax Porfiriana next month because I'm pretty sure it's going to be on the vote again because uh, it did so well uh, this month. And uh, and if it, if we do have it, it would be really awesome to have you come on the show and do a teach and play. Pretty sure we could find a bunch of, uh, of people to to come and, and play. I expect Joe would be would be would be up for it. Uh, probably Corey would be also up for it, and we can find some people from the disc other people from the Discord server also to join. Um, let's do let's do that. We we need to do a good propaganda campaign for for Pax Porfiriana. Okay, that could be uh, that could be fun. I'm let's try this. About it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it now. Now you know. <clears throat> let's focus on Warriors of God first, and then we'll get uh, okay. Porfiriana okay. on the on the on the go. Uh, what else could we talk about um, before we end this catastrophic stream and replan it? For <laughs> it's it's crazy because I so you've, you we've we were supposed to do this stream so many times it has been delayed a few times. I had my health problems and everything, and then we finally do it after so many postponing and everything. And in the end, look 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 at what's well, happening. I I think I speak for everybody that I'm glad that you're better. Uh, I, I don't know what it was, but I'm glad that the health problems are gone. So I, I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm still going through it, but I'm good enough to do to do to go back to streaming and everything. So that's that's OK. It's just that, uh, yeah, it's it's probably going to take a, a while for me to fully recover. But uh, but it's yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good enough and it's really looking looking great. But uh, I'm still frustrated. Like I, I felt like this was my comeback video, Patrick, and, and <laughs> the gods are against Fred's us. Fred's comeback, sixty-eight. <laughs> and so we we probably need to replan uh, replan a session. But I'm pretty sure we we can we can find a, a time next week. You we, I can't because I have my co-host coming back. So Volko oh. is back again. <laughs> He's always on. Horrible. Like it's really hard to. <laughs> <laughs> It's really hard to get rid of. He's always there. Uh, now we're going to do the part two for of the. Um, I think you the... should make Volko and and Mark Herman fight it out for it for the actual second chair. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we, we could have a league <laughs> because I already bit Mark Herman, so I could have a, a like they they could have their own design duel, and then I would have my duel against Volko. But I feel that would be that that would be weird because because I only did one small 30 minutes game and they are <laughs> like yeah and yeah so I, yeah i think it wouldn't be fair i don't think it's the same league but in the small 30 minutes game i can crush them like this like <laughs> of course yes. so but, yeah you know i have a i have a stunning admission for you fred here i i've not i've not played red flag over paris yet shameful. I'm, I'm sorry yes shame on me now there's two reasons first i blame mark herman for this hear me out yeah, <laughs> because, no, I'm because I'm I was curious. so excited, and and this is not to take away, but this is just me. I was so excited for Fort Sumter because I'm an American Civil War knight, and I got it, and I thought, oh, this is going to be like 13 days on steroids. This is going to be Mark Herman, and I got it, and I even got my little John Tyler action figure for the peacekeeping uh, process, and uh, it. I don't know. I just I, I maybe. Me and uh, another buddy in my play group, we played it three or four times, and I just, I was, I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't know. There was just something there that just didn't grab me. And then when everyone was telling me these these conflict, uh, the small box conflict games, and you were so excited, and you put out Red Flag of Paris, I'm like, I'm very excited, but I don't know anything about the Comp Paris Commune. <laughs> I, I slept through that part in world history. I'm sorry. But that's why you need the game. That's the I know, to... I know. I'm going to. I will, I will, I will. And it's probably going to knock my socks off. And I'm going to be like, I need it. And then I'll have to wait for everybody else to second printing. <clears throat> yeah. 
but it's okay. I'm I'm a bit sad. Uh, I'm, uh, but I, I think it take, it took a lot of courage to admit it uh, like this well, to my face. Sure. I think I will as soon as we're done here, I'll probably ban you from the Discord server. Okay. But I right. think that's that, that's that's only fair. That's <laughs> One only and fair. done, baby. One and done. No, but if you want, I'm happy to give you a, a demo of the game. Um, sure, I'd love that. Uh, yeah. Whenever, whenever you want, because I would I would say the settings are really really different. Um, so the the thing that inspired me from Fort Sumter is when 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 I played it, the thing where I had that haha moment, like oh, it's exactly what I needed as a system, right. is that Mark had this idea that what he will depict is the escalation up until the beginning of something. Right. And normally war games usually uh, depict specific crisis and specific conflict. And this idea that, well, you know what, I won't, I won't even go into that. And I will just look at what's happening just before. I thought that was extremely interesting, this idea of escalating tension and everything. What 13 Days is, was doing, just that, oh, thank God, uh, in the case of 13 Days, it didn't end up in an right, actual right. conflict we because there, right. <clears throat> we didn't go there. But it was this idea of, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take an event and, and show it from a different perspective and show we see the political tension and everything. And, and, and for me, it was very inspiring in the, in the angle that the, the, the game was taking. But then the games are depicting things that are pretty different. Right. So you will have a different experience because everything is political in, in Mark's game. So everything is very mobile and everything. Right. Whereas in Red Flag, you have a, a static aspect to it. Even the political is a bit tricky because you cannot you cannot go anywhere you want and everything. And you have um, some people will not like it because I added some complexity. Uh, so you don't have the, the pure uh, Fort Sumter system. You have a lot more uh, layers to it because the thing is that there was no game on the Paris Commune that existed. Right. And I thought, I need to make it easy to make it accessible. But on the other hand, I want to put as much history as I can in a package that is manageable. So you'll have a very different experience. I would say it's, it. I understand that if you already had Fort Sumter and an experience with it, and you were like, well, maybe the, the theme in this one doesn't interest me that much. But I would say it, it has its merits. It has. Well, its merits. that's, I mean, you hit upon it. It, it wasn't so much that I found Fort Sumter to be lacking what I found lacking for me was I'm just now getting really interested in this and the conflict is getting very heavy and then it's over and I was like yeah. oh, oh okay I wanted another 20 minutes you know the game so I, I didn't know how to add it add more to it so if you if your game has a little more crunch to it then that's what I'm looking for so uh, maybe it has a bit more, but and then maybe that's one of the frustration that I have is that even myself thinking, about, reflecting on the game now that it's out and everything, it's already sold out, so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> uh, is is uh, is is actually that uh, in a way maybe I'm thinking that a part of me thinks that it could have more, uh, it could be a slightly bigger game that I could have even twisted the system a bit more, that it could do those extra twenty or thirty minutes and everything. Right. But in the end, it would be a very different game. But yeah, so maybe you won't find necessarily that. I would say it has more crunch for sure because you have a lot more stuff to go through. There is a lot more mechanism that are integrate with in, the, the intrication of mechanism against each other. You might have that extra thing, but it's still a rather short game. Um, well, for you yeah. as a designer, I don't envy that difficulty of, of finding that uh, that sweet spot with the mechanism of adding enough complexity where it's perfect and then not overstaying its welcome. So for all of you that are designing games, I, you know, and going through that whole play test process, you know, you're, you're never going to please everybody. Yeah. Uh, so how do you find that sweet spot where yes, 25 minutes is perfect. It's not overstaying. It's welcome 45 minutes. Oh, that's too long. You know? So that's, that's the hard part for any game, I guess. And that's a good point because even for, for red flag over Paris, I have literally on BGG people complaining that it's a bit too complex and people saying that, oh my God, I'm frustrated. I wanted something more. So, And I'm thinking like it's it's supposed the most entry level kind of game you're supposed to have. Play a card. And, yeah. I and even, <laughs> yeah, even at that range of, 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 of simplicity, you still have people that are on both sides. Sure, sure. And Kevin well, I mean, is, it... is talking about 13 days here. What? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, you're right. It, it's, there's, I mean, you're never going to satisfy everybody. There's all sorts of players out there in the world. There's all sorts of new players coming into the hobby. So it's, it's all a process of getting them to, uh, you know, to enjoy things. Sometimes you have to kind of bring them up to that level. And sometimes you have to realize, well, the, maybe they're just not going to go to that level. They're going to stay on that side of the fence, you know? Yeah. And, and that side of the fence is awesome. There is a lot yeah. of really cool stuff. I think 13 days that uh, Kabuki Kid is mentioning here is 
for me, it was the first time where I was really impressed and I, I opened up this game and I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that you could do so much with so little uh, in terms of complexity and um, a table presence and everything. Like the footprint is extremely small and I was like blown away. And yes, it's a very simple game, pretty abstract and people complain about it, especially in the, in, in the war game community. But this game does so much with so few. I think it's, it's, it's amazing. And like I could live on that side of the fence easily. Like if I, I didn't, if if I had never had discovered war games and everything, I think I would be really happy with with thirteen days. Now I I developed a habit. I want to know more right. and everything. Go in depth. But thirteen days is an amazing design. I think it doesn't. In a way, I feel like it doesn't. It deserves more love than what it has. Even in our in our part of the hobby, we should be impressed by what what uh, uh, those designers managed to do. Uh, maybe be more inspired by it. Um, when I was done with Red Flag Over Paris, I, it was with Joe. We, we played again 13 days, and I was a bit ashamed. I was like, my God, this design is so good. Now that I've been through the whole process of making my own, playing it back, it's like, this is so good, actually. It's right. even better than what I thought. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it. You know, looking back over the fa- last 25 years, we have that distillation process from We the People, which begat sort of Twilight Struggle, which begat, you know. And then people were like, well, we want the we want the enjoyment factor of twilight struggle but in 20 minutes so here's 13 days and then now there's that whole there's a smaller p- footprint product with the you know the the final conflict series um that is trying to scratch that itch but uh yeah, yeah it, it's some people are going to rise to that level of what their enjoyment factor is and and watching last week with with levy and campaign i you know have just like oh, nevsky i don't know anything about that and then People keep saying it's good. And then I watched it. I went, yeah, it's really that good. I need to get it now. So <laughs> thanks. Yeah, and, thanks for and that. The, I think it's an interesting point that you're saying about Nevsky because last week when we were playing it, uh, it was Sam from Lord of the Board that was coming uh, coming on the show. So he comes from heavy board games. Like he plays Root a lot, Oath, like those big co world things. So, But still, for him, uh, War Game was completely foreign to his um to, to to his zone of comfort and everything and he jumped in straight into into nevsky so he played before that maria which is not the easiest war game to get into like it's it's quite something it's very different from a lot of other systems but it's like it's pretty complex in its own right even if it doesn't have a lot of rule, rules and then he went into nevsky and i think it's like there are just some people that they just enjoy that, um, like like the, the the challenge of of getting into the system, and they get they just get into it thanks to the to their interest in the in the theme and everything. Exactly. So I, I think it's really a different kinds of mindsets for different kinds of people. But when you yeah. when I see someone like Sam, I'm like, well, yeah, they like yeah, Red Flag of Paris is a game for babies. <laughs> like <because laughs> when I see this guy coming in and just jumping into Nevsky, I, I would never have done that. Like when I started war gaming. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I see. I see two comments in there. One, uh, Kabuki Kid talks about the Expanse. I I have the yeah. Expanse. Um, Me too. Uh, mm. lo- loved loved the you know series. Um, love the books. Mm. Love the game. And it was great because it was a uh, you know some people complain. Well, it's a, a retheming of Twilight Struggle for for space. Oh, or whatever. That's not but true. Exactly. Exactly. And it it really went well with my play group. And uh, yeah, there it is. So for uh, people and, who don't know, yeah, that's the, the having game. The expansion for it adds even more richness to it. Of course, you know, I like when an expansion adds to it and doesn't take away. Uh, and then Watergate, I just got Watergate, so I'm looking forward to cracking that open and, and getting again that two player experience of 30 minutes where you get all the richness of the theme well distilled into the mechanics. That's that's really what I look for. Yeah, it's so a Watergate, that's the thing. So it's here. I so that's I got it at uh, UKGE last year, and I still haven't played it, which is a bit shameful for someone who plays a lot of mini CDGs and everything. Right. Uh, but I, I I need to play it. I, I know that it's a very different take on, on the on the mini uh, on the mini card driven games, and I'm not excluding to make another one in the future. And I was really curious about the, the uh, uh, Matthias design because it, it looks like he's doing something very different. Okay. So if you start playing it, maybe we can yeah. <laughs> try to put it on the list. Yes, <laughs> put it on the big list. Uh, um, I want to I want to circle back to uh, to the combat commander list. Something that uh, we were talking about. I had mentioned the the community that's built out of it, and um, uh, one of the great things about combat commander as a game 
is the fact that the scenarios are the tip of the iceberg, right? You're, you're literally just getting what was asked of, of the creators by GMT when they put the box sets out. It's like, hey, we need some stuff that people can kind of just get started with. The heart and soul of the game is the random scenario generator. And that is what I love coming back to. I, I don't get nearly enough time to play it, but uh, I, I've done a series on, we, we, we went through the process and we're going to do it again for Pacific. But I actually just threw a challenge out a design challenge for the the latter participants that hey you've got a month and a half create a random scenario generator and then put a theme put a narrative around it and design a scenario and let's see what you got and we'll have a little panel of judges and and uh, they get to go through the play test process so that's pretty neat i'm, I'm looking mm. forward to see what comes out of that that sounds super interesting. I have a question for you from Kabuki Kid here asking uh, do you have a recommendation for the best combat commander scenario? See what I just said. You create your own scenarios. They're the best ones, always. When you and your buddy are uh, are putting out and trying to balance those scales, because the, the RSG, the inherent outcome of that is theoretically completely balanced on that victory track, right? The victory point track. So depending on how much you're willing to spend and give him to his side of the victory point track versus you know, keeping it on your side and playing the defender. And it really just affects the total outcome of the game. So some of the best scenarios I've ever had have been at two o'clock in the morning at a convention. We're like, let's do an RSG and we just roll something up and it's incredible. But uh, I've, the, I've never done that. I would be curious to see how it works. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That would be great. And, and, and uh, it's funny, even going through the Stalingrad rules last night, just to kind of refresh myself, there's the whole Stalingrad campaign, which I've never done, which is based on a series of at least five RSG scenarios that you create mm -hmm. as you're going on with with prescribed maps that you use, depending on if the Soviets win or the Germans win each round. Uh, it's incredible. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that, too. And one uh, one comment from Sav here that I think is is interesting uh, because we were saying about doing so much with so little and said can Ireland and C be beat? I have a few like in games that do a lot with little. I have a a few uh, games that can maybe can beat uh, Ireland and C. It, it, Ireland and C is, is pretty minimal. Have you have, have you have you played it, Patrick? No, I never played it. Uh, I, I think that. Actually, you know what? To me, that's an old Atari 2600 cartridge. And la air, land, and sea battle. That's what it is. I don't think that... Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's almost that. It's more no, that. no, I'm just showing my age. Sorry. <laughs> so doing uh, uh, so much with so little, I would say... Uh, I think it's... As yes. a war gamer, we should explore Condottiere a lot more. Uh, I think you, you, there is a core system here that is extremely interesting. Uh, you can add an interesting layer to it. I, I, I don't know why we're not more inspired, right? Like going back to the classics, it's yeah. really important. And this is a classic for, for a reason. And it is, my God, so good. And it does. I saw a lot it on your bookshelf last week. I was like, oh, come there, Gary. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Um, and the other thing, the, the question earlier was, uh, what is what else do I like teaching? Well, obviously, with the whole channel, with great campaigns of the American Civil War, uh, that is the. That is the heart and soul of the content that I create, but that's still my favorite to teach. So if you have any interest in the American Civil War at all, um, Joe Belkowski and Ed Beach uh, and Chris Withers and all of them have created this incredible long-standing 30-year-old system that at you know the operations level is that sweet spot. It's not tactical, it's not grand strategic. You know, I've got my my copy of For the People back here. I love it more than life itself, but it's that sweet spot of I need to get these three divisions over here so that they can attack those guys and not get flanked myself, right? So that's that's a wonderful system. I guess maybe at some point I need to I need to let you try to convince me to play American Civil War games. It's just that it's a topic that I have no interest in. I do have. Uh... Wow, it's like we just said the same thing to each. Other. Yes, yeah. No, but 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 I did I did have um and, and it's really because it's only ten years separate from the Paris Commune, so it's really the same era and everything. Right. So so it shares a lot of similarities. I I, I did get a. I w at some point, I was really interested in the Battle of Gettysburg specifically because I thought it was a, a fascinating battle, right. uh, extremely bloody, violent. Like, but I think it was showing something about changing. Like like war was changing the, the level of, exactly. of, of exactly. violence and everything right. and the modernity the beco it was almost becoming like like an industrial version of of murder and and, exactly. and violence 
So I, I, I was really interested in that battle, but the war itself, I, I must say I'm a bit disconnected, but I would be curious, especially with someone who's passionate about it, because I, I often see that what I like about playing war games is actually sharing a moment with someone, but also having them maybe walk me through something that they're passionate about, and, and this passion can be very, uh, you can transmit it and everything. So I would be open to okay. to to explore American Civil War. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, the, looking at your channel, that's you have just hit upon what everybody's looking for. I think they want somebody who's passionate to introduce them to something that they're like, eh, maybe I don't really know. But I mean, I took I took a, a semester long course on the Napoleonic Age, and I loved it. But then when I play Napoleonic games, I'm just like, eh, it's wait a minute. What I know, I know. Here we go. <laughs> Sleeves going up. Wait a minute. <laughs> what have you played? What have you played? Uh, well, let's see. Um, probably not the right ones. Let's see. Mm. Well, I've I, I've had uh, the fa the old Phalanx game. Let's see the Napoleonic uh, era. Ones. Oh, Age of Napoleon. Age of Napoleon. That's it. Uh, I, yeah. I um, and of course, what did I keep? The Phalanx uh, Civil War game, uh, House Divided. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I've played uh, Empires and Arms, uh, and and those are you know that's I've, and they range, but um, even down to Commands and Colors, which I love. Commands and Colors. I had all the Napoleonic stuff, and it was great. And then it was just like squares. Okay, you're gonna put squares out, and it always comes down to like, right? So what, the, what the, are we? It, it, yeah. what, what are we doing here? So I would say something that is that a lot of people are not going to like about comments and colors. But for me, comments and colors shine as long as there is no powder. Uh, I, I love comments and color. Uh, uh, yes. Ancient. I, yeah. I love medieval. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in love with uh, the Samurai Battles one. Uh, I, I really like the, 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 the one set in a fantasy setting, Battle Lore. I, I thought yeah. that was really yeah. fun and everything. But as soon as you have powder, so I played Memoir 44, I found it find it like i thought it was a great tool to play with people that are not war gamers and it was very vocative you have those figurines and everything i think that's great but i don't get a lot of pleasure from it uh i didn't like napoleonic because for me especially in the core box i think they fixed it with the expansion but for me there is a core issue once you introduce powder is it, the scale becomes really important there it is and you, you just said it right there yeah, and it's like, well, wait a minute, because I know this battle, and I know that from that hex to that hex, that's that distance, right. and it cannot be the same range as in right. this scenario, because the distance is radically different, and I don't know what we're playing anymore. So the uh, one thing I love, and, and I've, uh, I, I'm have i going to name drop here, because uh, down in Orlando, Richard Borg lives here in Florida, and so I, I get to see him at least once a year, but, and he will run stuff, and it, it's funny, I'll do an epics epic ancients thing and you know we have a question or something like you know richard come over here and he'll answer the question for us you know he's he's doing liar's dice over the next table but um you're exactly right that word scale because the first time i ever played memoir the first scenario in there is pegasus bridge commandos awesome and then eventually you get to the battle of kursk <laughs> And it's yeah, like it's like, each one of these tanks represents nope. a yeah. whole division of tanks and like uh okay it's a, that's a pretty big battlefield <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. the one th I, but what i what i the pleasure i find in that is that from eight from memoir to ancient actually from battle cry all the way forward the evolution of it now i can't speak to uh space whatever the one is red alert oh uh, yeah yeah i can't speak to that but he has modified the system i think to take into account the different scales now having started and and i feel bad that we kind of let it go and i need to get back onto it but the the tricorn series with mm. man's and colors from compass um there those two elements of of ranged combat and rallying really make that shine so they incorporated that you have to do a rally check and it's possible that those upstart colonials are just gonna the militia are just gonna run away so i think that uh that introduced the the scale normalizer for yeah. ranged combat. The range doesn't do would, a lot, but they could still potentially run away anyhow. I would be curious to try that. Uh, there is a question here from Kabuki Kid around, uh, is there a best com command and color game? Uh, and I think the difference is going to, the, the answer is going to be different for, for each person. I'm, I'm going to tell you the one that I enjoy the most is medieval because it's extremely brutal, extremely fun, uh, fast. Uh, it shows also the how 
like the thing is that you really feel like there is a drop in in IQ uh, from ancient to to medieval. Medieval is like it's fast and, and, it's like, <laughs> and you're like, I like that. I like that in right. in, in, the, in the system. Right. Probably ancient is the is the best, but I know that for me, the the, the one that I have the most fun with, and I want to have to do those epic moves that completely fail, and it's really funny. That's gonna be medieval, and I'm really yeah. looking forward to the expansion. Which one is your favorite? Uh, ancients by far, but for yeah. that exact reason, it's like just take a piece of steel and take a gladius and put it in somebody's gut. You know, there's just <laughs> you just get up there, close the ranks. But there is some finesse. Peter and I have learned now. We've we've done ancient is uh, is subtle, I think. Oh yeah, it can be. Yeah, it's Absolutely extremely it subtle. Be. Yeah, and but but the I mean even and this is a plug for this episode that I dropped yesterday. Uh, we we did the. Uh, the Battle of Issus, which was during the, the year of five emperors, and the dice and the cards obviously add a tremendous amount of swinginess, mm. but there's just that moment when you get that perfect dice roll out of nowhere, and there's a, a cry goes up from the crowd, and uh, you're just overcome with emotion because you weren't supposed to win that battle, but you did. Yeah, so, that's pretty epic fitting. It is, and it is. A, another question from, from Kabuki Kid. Um, and yeah, I'm going to give an answer and then giving back to you to see Patrick what you what you think. But uh, I think favorite introduction war game could be a video in itself. Like like we could have a panel. You could come. We could find a couple of guests and talk about it. I would say that in the end, if someone is interested in historical games or war games, and then again, I think because I think it's bigger. It's not only war that we can play. Like when you're playing Watergate, you're playing a historical game. It's not necessarily a war game. But for me, that's part of the same. Uh, at least the things that I like. I would say when you want to get someone into it, if they are interested, I would I would start more than the game. Think about the topic because the the if the interest in the topic is there, you can go a long way through complexity and everything. If they are interested, especially if the theme is well implemented and they know about the history, they will make connections in their mind based on what they know about the event and what's happening on the board, and that helps a lot. But if they are not and they are just curious about stuff, I think there are a few that come to mind. I think one of like for example three hundred. RSNC is probably the thing that I would bring the, the 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 most to the table because it fulfills a few conditions for me for what is a good introductory war game. It's short, it's simple, it looks good, it's not threatening, and the uh, and the topic is not like should not make anyone uncomfortable. So I think right. this is like a game like this is for me is a really solid pick, uh, and it's still pretty historical. There is some content and everything. Then I'm looking behind me, but I'm thinking I was thinking about something else, but like a game for for me, like three hundred is is like a is an excellent uh, entry point uh, in there. Um, what else? Oh, and and Dante Normandy for me, and Dante Normandy oh, is right, right. also it's it, it it fits the same uh, the same the same criteria. It looks extremely good. Uh, the mechanics are not too complicated. They are actually connected to other parts of the hobby. So if they know a bit about deck building, it's going to be extremely easy. But at the same time, it gives them a bit of a combat commander experience in a way. The narrative is extremely fun. It, it looks good. It's not too long. So for me, like the games like this, 300 and Dante Normandy, um, are, are great for people who don't have a strong appeal to a specific theme or are just curious and you don't want to scare them out. I would say those types of game are for me extremely strong, and I feel like we are really lucky to be in a, you know, at a time where we have so many good options for introductory war game. What what would be your picks? Without a doubt, well, you, I mean, you took a lot of, of what I was going to say, but it is not so much about the mechanics, but it is about the uh, passion for you to teach them and whatever is of interest to them. That is going to pay a lot of dividends because that will help them get over. The, the mechanical hump of like, oh, geez, rules, what do we do here? Um, I, I, I think games such as, you know, it, it, I think also the problem is everyone has a different definition of what is a war game. You see it mm -hmm. on BGG all the time, but uh, you can you can do it as simply as root. You can do it as simply as yeah. a coin game. You can, you know, some will say they're one and the same. You could do it with Twilight Struggle. You could do it with Watergate. Any, any of those things, it really just depends on if they're thinking about little tiny chits and hex encounter stuff. Well, there are options for that. Some may even recommend starting with a solo game, you know, going out there and, and trying one of the, uh, 
the submarine games, the hunters, the hunted, whatever, um, because they will give them an experience. And if they're really interested in submarine warfare in mm. Germany or the Pacific or whatever, that's going to ease them into the water. So it really is just about taking in, in gradual steps. Some of them, nobody's going to just jump right in and say, we're playing campaign for North Africa. As we leave it dawn. You know, you're just, you're not going to do that. But you were touching upon something that is really important, I think. The problem is not the game that you pick. The problem is how you're going to approach it. Like the, it's not it's not on the game to to be introductory. It's on it's on you. If you're the person who's going to get someone into war gaming, you have to make it friendly, unthreatening, interesting. Uh, acknowledge the fact that some things that might seem obvious for you are actually extremely complex for someone who has a very different gaming background from you. Uh, thinking about or whether are they interesting in. So I think the game is not that important. It's really you. And it's maybe, maybe, maybe we should have something that discuss about tips on how to get be welcoming sure. and have people oh, yeah. in more yeah. than the games themselves. But Kabuki Kid is mentioned in 1775. I know I just said the game is not important, but it's true that the <laughs> Birth of America series is actually an excellent series to get into war games. That's that's right. true. I, I've not played any of those. Uh, you know, the, I guess it's the making of a continent. Uh, they've they've got the 1751 for. Yes, it's yeah. Birth of America. Yeah. Birth of America, yeah. that's it. Yes, they've yeah. got them for the uh, the Seven Years' War in America. They've got them for that. And then what's there's a there's a third one in that series, isn't it? Uh, yes, there is three in the series. Uh, I don't remember. There is the one for French and Indian. Uh, right. And then yeah, there's 1775, know. and then there's one... Is there a civil war one? No, they don't have a civil no, war. No, 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 not civil war. It's it's 18th century. Uh, okay. So it's, yeah. So I, I don't remember, uh, but I know there is three in it. And then there is the Viking one. So the first burst of Europe one. Okay. Um, and there was one that was, that I playtested years ago uh, that was supposed to be released on the 30 years war, but <laughs> in the burst of uh, Europe. Oh, series, 1812. But... There it is. Yes. Oh, 1812. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but I, I still, yeah, I don't know when they are going to release a new one in the in the series. I hope they will. I think that it's a system that has a lot of flexibility. It could be expanded, added a bit more complexity. Things could be done with the card, but there is a magnificent potential there. Just don't know what they're doing at Academy Games. Uh, I'm, I'm, bit, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, looking at the comments here. Oh, yeah, Stuart is saying that he really needs to play CC Medieval. So Stuart, yes, you need, especially you, you need to play it. You're going to have a lot of fun playing it. Um, I think and, that was the, the one factor that uh, like medieval and we're all thinking knights and then you realize it's it's more Byzantine. early medieval it's late yeah. right exactly exactly and now they're like hey 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 it's okay we're putting out the crusades it's coming we're getting there just mm -hmm. loan you it's fine okay but all right we'll I was wait. actually I was actually super happy that it's, personally I was really excited that's one one of the things that got me excited about the game is that they started with this period and didn't go for uh, straight right. uh, nobody uh, knows anything about Belisarius you know it's yeah like, exactly they went for pure middle age but it's like well that shift that moment like when right. we're in the 5th right. 6th century like that shift or from that late from, empire. like the fall yeah the the fall from from the, the like the collapse of the roman empire what's happening in europe the, how warfare changes and everything it's like that's super exciting we don't have many games on this no uh and so i was pretty excited that they were covering that they were starting from there to build uh on top of that yeah. and i think just for that it's uh it was a uh, courageous move because as you say people wanted the um, uh wanted the crusades uh and i'm happy that they didn't go straight into it uh, yeah for sure yeah. that's good uh what do we have here um just if you see uh oh we have a, a comment from deborah saying the trouble with entered it already is, as an introductory uh game for me is it's world war ii team theme uh but my current ruse is to start with war chest and then say try undaunted um yeah i i guess that some people might be put off by world war ii which i can completely understand um then again, that's also what I said about 300. I think 300 feels a bit more far away, almost for some people, almost like fantasy or something like this. It is very historical, but I guess that World War II can be challenging uh, as, a, as a theme to, to get people in. Um, and yeah, I guess that's... I don't know. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about, Patrick? I, I think uh, the bathroom's calling, probably. <laughs> okay, but then... <laughs> 
I would say I'm extremely sorry again for for the big fail. Uh, so sorry, to my Patrick. Big fail. Sorry, it's sorry fine. to you guys. We had a few. Uh, so if you're joining right now and you're wondering where <laughs> the hell is Combat Commander, we just spent one hour talking Theater about other stuff. Theater of the mind. Stuff. Yeah, we, we yes exactly. We played in the, in our minds, and I'm and yeah. Currently, my uh, my medium machine gun is in G7, and Patrick knows that. And uh, okay. we're just playing yeah everything like this. So yeah, we were just chatting because we had a technical problem. Uh, it ended up being actually a pretty interesting chat. Uh, so yeah. thanks for for tap dancing with me uh, on on that one. You're a great partner, Fred. And 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 I hope you'll come back. Uh, first of all, because we need to play that combat commander scenario now. I'm super excited. Uh, the second thing, try to convince people to have Pax Porfiriana next month for the club de jeu, um, and have a teach and play. That would be great. And then maybe at some point this summer or something after I'm done with my a my infamous ASL series that I committed to. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you fell into that one, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's Corey uh, that, that that tricked me. He's awful, an awful. But person. I'll watch uh, it because I'm I'm curious. Because you like to see people in pain, yeah. Sure. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But yeah, and we need to discuss about maybe getting me into the American Civil War thing. And uh, but as a trade-off, you'll have to try some Napoleonic games. I will. Makes sense. I will. Yeah. I will. Great. Well, I but thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Thanks, Patrick, for taking the time. We have to, yeah, we'll have to to make it up at some point <laughs> to, to to do that stream. We, I feel like it's cursed. Uh, we need to we need to fight it, you know. Uh, but we'll see. Do a save on your side. I'll do a save on mine, and we. Pick I it will up, uh, we'll, we'll, as soon we as got we can. It. But Good thanks deal. for everyone. Have a great evening, and see you guys next week for part two of Nevsky Teach and Play with Volko and Sam from Lord of the Board.